Okay. Yo, where do people where do people uh, go wrong the most in just financial literacy in general? Uh, I j- I think people go wrong because we're not like conscious of what we're doing, and I see that. Give me an example though. Like, if you had to point it out, what would something going wrong look like? Um, and it might sound like it's not going wrong because it's going good, but I think when you coming from a place of not having a lot, not making no money. That's where I was going to go, yeah. Right? To, we talking, we talking struggling, we talking poverty, we talking PJs, we talking single parent. We can even be talking, uh, even if you got mom and dad at home. But we coming from a place of you never made six figures. So which means you never made seven figures. When we start to hit those numbers, we don't watch what we're doing. So we don't we can't pinpoint how we got there. Mm-hmm. Which means that we can't backtrack to figure out expenses oh. for taxes. Yeah. Which means that we can't backtrack to figure out activity to do it again. Come on, man. Which means that we can't we can't forward project stability in income mm, mm, and when you come from having nothing as to we still in that first phase of of ha- of we still in that first phase of money you come from having nothing the first thing you're trying to do is get all the things that helps compensate you having money so now we buying the clothes mm-hmm. now we buying the toys now we buying access to people so now we keeping up with the next man or woman, but we still don't even know how we got here. Mm. And I think that's the, that's always the problem. And I'm saying that from a place of like, I've seen people come across my desk, may go from a hundred thousand dollars a year employed to 800 grand a year from a business. Most of it was from coaching and consulting, right? But then we still can't figure out the gap between a hundred grand to eight hundred grand of how we even got here. And then now it's time to do taxes and we scramble. We don't know what to do. Mm. So it holds us up from doing anything. Right. And it's crazy because like again, I'm keep trying to put it back on our level. Go ahead. From zero to a hundred yeah. and two hundred grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it's the same because when you explain it from like a hundred to eight hundred. I'm like shit. I was going through that from zero to a hundred fifty. For you know sure. what I'm saying? Like I remember my first time making a hundred. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I did it. I can do it again. But how? Like, I you know have. what I'm saying? Like, it feels. It, it feels. It almost feels. Um, like, like you're hope. Not hopeless, but um, impossible almost. Yeah. Sometimes because it's like, bro, I just did it. I don't know how I'm about to do this again. Yeah. I need it now because yeah. once you go to that, like you said. Now, I think one of the biggest mistakes is we make the money and now we have our lifestyle be dependent on the money that we made. Yeah. So now anything go wrong, you you messed up. Yeah. You feel me? So it's yeah. like, and when things go wrong, as they will go wrong, you got all these expenses and it's like, damn, yeah. I, like I just made this much money. I just made 350. Yeah. Just made three. I don't know where, man. But you got the expenses of making three fifty. Yeah. And now you ain't making three fifty. Now you ain't making three fifty. Do you think we? Is that reversible? In the African American culture, I'm gonna talk about African American culture for sure because that's why I say it. That's why I say it a lot. Do you think that's reversible? Because I feel like all of us that come from nothing, we got to get a taste of something yeah. and we got to learn from it. Yeah. I think it is, but I think I think you have to go through that experience for you to see it. But especially it, for us, is it possible? For us not to, for us to reverse it so we don't have to go through that. So we can hit it, hit the ground running, and the first time we do it, we do it right. Or no. Yeah, I I think so because we in a time period of just, you know, as the big people I guess on the ground might call it the financial revolutionary, right? Every mm-hmm. everybody's being conscious of like making more money, becoming out of like what our parents was between the millennials and the Gen Z's. That's automatically like a different type of ch- habit that people are going in. So is it reversible? For sure, I think it's reversible because I don't think what we went through was nothing that was like 
I, I think we repeat cycles. I, when you look at history, I think it repeats itself. Mm -hmm. There's a time period where where we was doing really good. We think about like the late 1800s, 19, early 1900s, the golden age of, of black businesses or where there were black people who were successful. We were doing business with white people, all that type of stuff, which is how Jim Crow was even was even founded, right? Because black businesses were doing so good, they were cutting out a lot of white businesses. Mm. So now the South said, hey, we're going to put in Jim Crow. Jim Crow going to keep your people over there. It's going to keep my people over here. And when that, segreg when that happened, um, there was a decline in, in more especially in our community and our businesses. But now you, and it, I feel like it's been like that ever since now between COVID and now we probably have more black businesses, more successful or failure or failed businesses, all the same, who started, stopped, started, stopped and trying to seek a different pathway. Mm -hmm. So I think with more people like us having conversations about this, getting that exposure out there, you can reverse them habits early because we not I'm not telling you nothing that if you. I'm not telling you nothing that if you start now, you could be somebody different because we got the case studies on it. Yeah. So just like you said, I know I went from a uh, 100 grand to 800, but the same stuff applies from 100 grand to I'll say less than uh, 300,000 or less. Mm. Right. Because you you never made. I mean, you think about that. In math, all we got to really do is move the decimal and the number either gets bigger or smaller. Yeah, yeah. Right. So when you think about something like that, it's a small change that could blow your world up from forty grand a year to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm. And if we making a hundred thousand dollars a year, we making anything over eight grand a month. That's a lot of money for somebody who never had that type of money. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you have to go through those experiences to understand the feel of having money because the first thing you're going to do, bro, that's our community. We're going to see the stuff. We want all the, we want all the things, but what happens is, is a lot of us are getting, we're getting deeper in our relationships, period. So the fulfillment we thought we were going to get from having all the things is still not there. Mm. So it got us seeking, which we can recreate the activity to get the money again, but now you experienced you you went through an experience of a different type of loss or a new journey, and so you get excited about the process. Mm. Or maybe I'm just talking about me, right? You get excited about the process of like, yo, I made a hundred grand. I never made that. I never thought I would see that. I never I never understood what it what it was to even be considered a six figure earner. Mm -hmm. And then now to make that, you're going to do whatever th is in your hands possible to do to rebuild it, recreate it, right, and sustain it. Mm -hmm. And one of the first people you're going to have to run across is probably going to be somebody who understands money a little bit. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think when you experience that, it puts you in a different frequency, different mindset, and it makes you be that much more attentive to what you're doing. Mm. Yo, you're talking about running into somebody with that mindset. I think community is the biggest part of building a mindset yeah. like that. Like just the environment in general. Yeah. Because when you get around certain people, it's a new standard. Yeah, for right? sure. And then now if that's the standard, like you don't want to be below the standard. Yeah. So now you're trying to live up to the standard. Yeah. So like, but I, I say that because like, <clears throat> I never forget, man, my first year, I, it was like probably two, two and a half years ago. First year making like a hundred thousand dollars, and I just at the end of the year I was like, "Damn, like where did it all go?" And I remember the same thought came my first time making over two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and I'm like, "What the? No way!" I'm like, "No way!" It, like me, mm -hmm. where did it all go? Mm -hmm. Where is it at? Mm -hmm. And I just remember like when I had a hard time, like a hard patch. I was like, it just, it almost like, it was discouraging because it was like, man, I made this. I ain't never made that. Was that just a thing? Mm -hmm. Like, was that just a, 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 like, a moment? Right. It's like, nah, I know we're going to get it back again. But how? Right. But if I was able to, like you said, 
put things in place, yeah. I would know exactly how. I would know exactly how to do it again. Yeah. So like, I don't. It's like, and going through that, me personally, I don't want nobody to go through that because I know how that felt at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, how can we get these kids to, or young adults or whoever to fight those urges of going to get it, everything they desire? Mm-hmm. Like to fight that urge of not just being patient, right? Like, and I'm just like, I don't know, bro. Because people, at the end of the day, somebody told me this before. When a nigga got everything, you can't tell him nothing. Yeah. When a nigga don't got nothing, you can't tell them nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you can't yeah. tell these niggas nothing. Yeah. So man. it's like, but like in my mind, like I just wanna, I want people to skip those mistakes that I made for sure. For sure, I I used to feel that way, but then the more people who used to come across our office, I felt like it was a ne- it was a necessary part of the process. Mm. So I think about. Um, I think about on um, so I'm I watch Marvel. So I think about Doctor Strange when um the ancient one told him like she said you can't beat a river into submission. You gotta surrender to it. You know what I mean? And so when I heard that, I was like, man, that's crazy. So it's like we trying to prevent people from kind of like you gotta go against the current and it's hard. You know what I mean? Because you're walking up upstream to a river with currency that's going a different way. But if you surrender to it, I think the natural flow will kind of guide you where you need to go. Mm-hmm. And those flows come with them them pain points. And I think that um, for most people, unless you're coming from a place like, like your children might see it different, but that would be because you went through the experiences it would be because you went through the experiences and you have them in an environment that was unlike ours coming up. So only thing that they see is from this level up, mm. right? But you're still holding on to from this level down because you've been there. They haven't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So their level of their currency flow is going to be different from somebody like ours because we coming from a place of we never had nothing. So you 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 add that with the trust issues we got with ourselves, right? It's hard for people to trust other people's word or t- or listen to what they got to say when they barely can trust their own word. Mm. So your experiences allow you to build your trust within yourself. And in them dark moments, you know what I mean? It's almost like with <laughs> um let me be quoting uh, cartoon movies all day, but it's almost like what what Bane said. Like I, I, you adopted the dark. I grew up I in grew it. I grew up in. You know what I mean? He 